got a problem. This thing is not flat, which means it's not going to seal. So see if we can fix that with some 80 grit sandpaper. Got some stamp paper stuck to the table here. And then we can check our prog progress on a known flat surface. Still wobbly. And you can see where it's shiny. That's where we removed material. So we knocked down the high spots. Hey. Almost there. Might have gotten it. Don't hear any. Yeah, it's not crashing. The, uh, I can almost feel it a little bit, but it might be hanging off the edge a little bit. No, I think we might have got it. I'm just gonna get one more pass. And then check on that. Okay, looks like we removed quite a bit of material there. Yeah. I'm gonna go test it on there. Go check it out. Okay. Nice and flat. Does it rock? Slight bit. Can you feel it a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Rub, uh, rocks a slight bit. Okay. Well, let's just do this a few more times and then we'll see what we got. How does it look? I don't know. Mm, looks a bit do a better. A bit more. I feel like this end. No, you don't want to focus on one area because you'll make that area lower. Okay, I'm going to try it again. The car's leaking. Okay, do you feel anything? Barely. Barely? <laughs> Although it might be because it's hanging off the edge a little bit. No, well, maybe. Like, yeah, this is so this. cold compared to the... <laughs> yeah, no, it, was, it warmed up, didn't it? Yeah. So you set that on there and... A little wobbly. Mm, I don't think so. I think it's uh, I think it's because yeah, I think it's because we're hanging off the edge. So I, mean, I can make it, I can make it do that by just pushing on one side. But I think it might be okay just like that. Yeah, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that'll be good. Yep. There's still a bunch of little pitting in here, which can potentially cause leaks, but. That's what uh, our TV is for. That's what what? What does our TV Oh, this mean? other stuff over here. Our TV black. Extra oh. gasket maker. Just to make sure it's watertight. Mm-hmm. So it's my little helper's bedtime. So trying to get this thing wrapped up here. What I'm doing is stacking these up, making sure Everything is right where I need them, where I want them, where they're happiest, and no rockage. Make sure everything's seated. No, no, once you got it in there right, it doesn't rock at all. So I think it's catching on the um, on the edge of the thermostat. So, and then I got uh, stainless steel bolts. Um, I double checked the uh, the holes here, as well as the small bolt pattern hole set. They do not penetrate the water jacket. Uh, check your manifold if they do, because you're gonna need some thread sealant on them um, if they penetrate the uh, the water jacket. I know my small block Ford um, does, so you gotta use this stuff, otherwise it'll leak out of the threads. So at every manifold, it's a little different. Um, I'm using the uh, Ultra Gray. Uh, according to their website, it's good for uh, thermostat housings. So that's what I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna, Drop the cap. <laughs> so anyway, um, you can see the hole is kind of off-centered here. Flip this around. It's still off-center, but it's just on the edge there. It's not hanging over. I had to trim it because it had some funky thing on here, probably for some other smog manifold. I don't know. All right, I just use my poker here. Kind of pulled this out. Now I've actually screwed up once in the past and. 
poked all the way through and went out the side. So you gotta be careful. Especially when you get down to the bottom of the tube and it's all rolled up. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scrape off this right here. So I'm getting all the chunkies from the, the dried up chunkies out of the front, from off the tip here. So I think I'm past all of that now. Good, clear, clean, smooth stuff. Yeah, much better. I still feel it. You don't want any of those dry chunks in there. Yeah, you don't have this problem with a new tube. It's dried up in the tip there. And I mean, you want to focus on any of the areas that are pitted in the aluminum. Okay, like I said, there's no penetration into the water jacket through the bolt holes, so you don't have to worry about going around the bolt holes. Okay. Make sure that's lined up right where you want it. Now I'm going to take the housing, you can pay attention to those pitted areas. Not much of a ledge to seal up there, but I'm gonna go all the way around. Now you really should only do this on the thermostat housing side. Because if you have to take this thing apart again, the whole thing's gonna be glued together and you're just sitting there scraping on the manifold, but I really hate water leaks. So I'm doing both sides because they're both old and used and although we did a little bit of a home surfacing job on this one I still don't trust it so I don't even trust the new ones much junk out of China now nothing's flat Remember the housing is done. Okay, so the next step is to put the front accessories on here. Um, but I gotta put the freeze plugs in first. Uh, I don't want to, um, you know, have everything in the way when I'm trying to pound this one in. As it is, these uh, water pump <laughs> kind of uh, kind of close there. So I wish I put that in before I put the water pump on. That's okay. We'll make it work. All right, next step, put the core plugs in. Give me a fresh tube of. Black like RTV, and they make a special uh, sealant for this, but this works just fine. Just put a little bit around, or adversely, you can put it in the hole. find a socket that fits it. <clears throat> fits perfectly. And it's got a nice thick edge on around it, so it's not gonna slip inside or go all crooked. Get yourself a little hammer. Get a good couple good wax. All right, so always a lot of questions about how to uh, orientate these uh, rocker shafts. You'll see on one end, there's a notch 
notch goes down. Um, if you look really closely, the, the camera there. Uh, if you look really closely here, you can see that the the mounting bolt holes here, when they're straight up and down, the oil holes are offset. So you want to orientate the oil holes towards the spring or towards the outside of the engine or straight down. Because if you think about how these are on a V8, they're going to be at an angle. So you want the holes to be perpendicular, obviously facing down though. So when those are perpendicular, you want the oil holes facing uh, down towards the earth. So in this case, the notch goes to the back of the engine on the right bank and towards the front of the engine on the left bank. The rockers themselves have an RH and an LH. So that's as you're facing the engine LH goes on the left hand, RH goes on your right hand. When you go to the other side of the engine, it's how you're facing the head. These retainers, there's wide ones and narrow ones. It's got to be mindful of uh, where you place those. Some people just know exactly where they go. And if you don't, it's just pretty self-explanatory. It's just like putting a little jigsaw puzzle together. The pieces fit where they want to go. If you stick a wide one in there and it's binding up, well, maybe put a little one in there. A little one in there and there's a whole bunch of play. Then you put a big one in there, so. However, in this case, little, big, little, big, little. So every other one, pretty straightforward. Okay. So assembly loop to the tip of each one of these. I'll have to come back through here. Proper torque sequence, torque specs. Put the other side on first now. L R L R L R L R. So, just like on that one, a little notch goes down. You see the bolt goes in at an angle. So you want the holes for the oiling of the rockers to be closer to the spring side or more vertical to the floor. So if you had it this way, the oil holes will be more um, pointing towards the lifters. So you want them this way pointing towards down. So on the left hand side of the engine or driver's side, you want the notch down and forward. And on the passenger side, you want the notch down to the back. Keep an eye on the push rods, make sure that they stay in the cup of the lifter. And as I run these down finger tight, I want to make sure the push rods aren't you know, digging into the side of the rock or something. You want to make sure that they stay in their cups as well. Alright, I printed out the uh, torque specs on this. Rocker shaft retaining bolts. 200. I'm guessing that's inch pounds. Now a lot of these other ones 
actually specify inch pounds, otherwise it's in foot pounds, but I can't imagine that being 200 foot pounds. It says in the uh, in the text here, install rocker arm and shaft assemblies with a notch on the end of the rocker shaft pointing to the center line of the engine and toward the front of the engine on the left bank and to the rear on the right bank. Making sure to install the long stamp steel retainers in the numbers two and four positions. Two and four positions. One, two, three, four. So I got that right. Tied to 210 inch pounds. There we go. So 210 inch pounds. All right, so this did not give me any kind of torque sequence, but uh, just to kind of spread it out, I'm going to start in the middle and work my way out. Okay, got my parts out of the sandblaster. Go, uh, gonna go ahead and paint them. But first I wanna go ahead and just kind of wipe them down. Just kind of using some lacquer thinner here. Right Alright, so this is just kind of a low budget uh, resto and if I wanted to, we can hit these with epoxy primer and some base coat, good base coat on there, but it's a bit expensive doing that. I think that'll work just fine. Got the bolts set for in the tumbler. Got those painted and dried. These are almost out. I might not have enough cover. This is uh, just the Krylon gloss black it's paint and primer in one. Cause I'm just going direct to metal. You could also hang these from wire, um, which I've done in the past as well. Uh, just kind of nice because you kind of pan them all at the same time. So I got these exhaust manifolds uh, cleaned up. I just gave them a once over in the uh, bead blast cabinet. I'm going to go ahead and paint them with this uh, Duplicolor engine paint. This is up to 500 degrees. I've actually used this stuff before. It works pretty well. Uh, it's cast coat iron. Uh, so it'll give it that uh, dark gray cast iron coat. It'll at least, uh, you know, last a little while keep them from rusting right off the bat but uh go ahead and shake this up and uh get painting all right let's see how this goes we'll let that dry overnight flip them over do the other side tomorrow <laughs> 